And there's a very simple story that allows a question to be asked that tests our understanding of what has been called divine psychology. There's that story about the king who had everything that a king could wish for. His coffers were full of treasures, the granaries were overabundant, his, there was peace in his land, he had a harem full of women to satisfy his needs. But he was not a happy man, he was not content. But the only thing he found that could assuage or relieve his feeling of emptiness it was to go hunting. So one day he was out hunting with his entourage on his wonderful black stallion. But uh, of course, being on his black stallion that was faster than any of the other horses, he, in chasing a deer, he very quickly um, separated from his group. And uh, he became completely lost. The deer had disappeared, but the king became completely disoriented and lost in the dense forest that was there. Now, in that process, of course, his regal robes were torn. He became quite disheveled. His horse was thirsty and he was tired also hungry and thirsty. And of course the day passed and he had not found his way out of this forest. But as the night came down, he noticed a light in the distance. So tired as he was and knowing his horse was in the same condition, they made their way towards the light and they found that it was a little cabin nestled in a little glen, you might call it, in this deep, dense forest area. So he went up, of course, to the door of this house, and it was opened by an old man who could see his state of being and immediately welcomed him in. <coughs> And with the aid of his old wife, he was ushered over by the fire and wrapped in a warm blanket that had been crafted out of the hair of the goat by the old woman of the house. He was given a cup of warm mulled wine made from the berries of the forest. But as it happened, this couple were of the faith that celebrated the coming of the Sabbath day. So on the table there was laid out the candles and the bread that was part of the ritual that celebrated this Eve. Now after the king had been warmed by the wine and the fire, he was taken to the table. It was time for the repast. And as they sat down at the table, there was the ritual of lighting the candles and pouring the wine. And then the old woman went to the stove and brought back to the table a large tureen of hot chicken soup and laid it in the middle of the table. And then the old man began to chant the ritual prayer over the bread and the soup. And the king, sitting there, found himself humming along with the sound of the chanting. After the chanting ceased, the bread was broken, 
and they partook of the hot chicken soup. After they'd eaten, sitting around the table, the old man and his wife began to tell stories, anecdotes of their life, and the king found himself joining in with anecdotes of his own, and so there was laughter and tears as they all shared the stories that were told, evocative stories. The king was laid down in front of the fire and in the warmth he fell into a deep and peaceful sleep. But in the morning, of course, his duty, his palace called and just before he was taking his leave of the old couple, after giving them prolific things, he said, that was the most delicious chicken soup I have ever eaten. Will you give me uh, the means of making it? So the old woman very carefully relayed to the king the ingredients and the way to prepare the chicken soup. Now, when the king got back to his palace, he immediately went to the kitchen, to his cooks, and gave them the instructions that had been passed on to him by the old woman. But again and again, each time his cooks brewed the chicken soup, the king found that it was not the same as that which he had taken in the house of the old couple. So he was very perplexed by this. So he sent messengers to the forest to bring the old couple to him. And when they were brought into his presence, he said, Your chicken soup is not the same as that is made by my cooks. Tell me, is there some secret ingredient that you have not told me? And the old couple said, No. And so the king said, Well, well, what, what is it then? And so the old couple whispered in each other's ear. And then the old man spoke up and said, Sire, so the question that arises out of this story for us, in our endeavor to bring to our understanding divine psychology, as the old woman standing by her husband what would you say in reply to the king's question? Well, what is it then? Divine psychology. My cook was just doing this, doing it as a job by the people who were actually doing it from their heart. Yes. Yes. What does this clarify for us in our endeavor to understand what is divine psychology? 
it's not just about cooking the food, it's the state you cook the food in. And it's the offering of the food which makes a difference as well. And if you're cooking the food with love, that even adds an extra level of wow, which creates that amazing taste. Yeah. And if you just do it without of that, it's just what it is. I remember, um, I remember